something. Dun dun. that white while the intro is going on or does it, it, it show transitions us? in yeah okay good because i was about to point to it have you listened to that like that bit of the song can you hear like the beeping in it because i always listen to the intro and i'm like there's a beeping in the background of that intro play it again what you just a little bit just this is the first time we're gonna play the intro twice oh special podcast beeping what it's like uh, it, i think i know it's like ding 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 yeah, wait. Halfway through, it's only two. Ding, ding. Before you press play, can I just point out that the reason I said something is because you said we always used to say something and then And you're like, yeah, we can. Something. Oh, that was my dad <laughs> and then the sound effect was, <laughs> right. was... Sorry for the delay to the start of this. Let's listen. Yeah. What? It sounds like somebody's watch going off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? What's yeah. that? It sounds like an old school Casio going yeah, off. Yeah, Casio's ding, gone ding, off ding, next ding, to the mic. But no, no. Yeah. Wait for it. It's like a ringing. It's like a ding. It's like a ring. I reckon, I reckon Matey's like holding the mic ready to, because this is like a bit I've cut out of a song. Yeah. Once again, please don't copyright strike us. It's sleep, <laughs> it's sleep token. It's a good song. Uh, he's, he's got his Casio next to his thing. Yeah. I've, every time I listen to it, I'm like, when I eventually go on the podcast, I will mention that to see if, if <laughs> yeah. they've realized it as well. Wow. But yeah, there's beeping in it. That's like, amazing. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, when you eventually go on the podcast, because we were going to have you on when we did the little NAPC mini series. Yeah. And yeah. right outside the door, like the equivalent of that door there, while we were like interviewing kind of, I don't know, other people, you were doing your souk full practice. Yeah. And I we, remember, yeah. We'd go out and like open the door and be like, oh, we need um, like, oh, Hendo or whatever. While looking and seeing a flying body. Yeah. And Ed would go fucking past our head. Probably not now. It's not a good time, Giles. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're not going to take Ed. Yeah, but mm. how you doing? Yeah, yeah, finally nice. here. Yeah. yeah, in a lovely place. Look at this is sick. Oh, look this at it. Yeah, sick. once again, if you're listening, come to YouTube. Yeah, mm. I recommend. Click the ads. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got knee injury because you had a bad knee recently. Yeah, so right? I did maybe last week. I did a double side um off something that was just too high like oh. i looked at it and i was like i could double side off that you know like when you first start training you're like oh that would be so cool to do a double side there yeah and then i was like yes. oh, yeah. i feel like i'm strong enough to do that now and then i did it and the grass was a bit wet uh. kind of slipped and bottomed out my knee but like oh that was that one <sighs> yeah it was yeah, on instagram yeah, yeah. and the one that i like the one that i posted is the one that i hurt myself on but no one seemed to notice um but yeah it, it was you just felt it <laughs> yeah oh like I, I post a youtube video of it and i'm like you can see as soon as i land my reaction is just silent i'm just like really oh no knee twists are the worst yeah. Wait, so like, yeah. i just yeah. heard something what, what do you mean i always forget what that means so i like went down and my ass, your ass touched your... my heel yeah but i so it would have been okay like i've landed like that many a time mm. but my right foot slipped back as well and then it kind of went down just like an awkward position so like mm. proper compress the joint it's the unpredictable stuff that's the worst yeah I, I think I just slipped I just slipped on the grass yeah. high things. double sides are so scary anyway yeah they're like, freaky because <laughs> low ones it's fine to kind of fall over a bit yeah but yeah like, yeah like I did I did it twice the first time I did it I over rotated and rolled and it was fine mm. um, and then the second time I was like let's rain it in a bit let's try and do it without hands um, yeah just so slipped. it was raining a bit no, it, I reined it in and I just slipped oh, on the grass. I it was just wet. Oh, it's <laughs> it was raining a bit. bit. It's like <laughs> grass. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a go. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like the start of the podcast with guests is always like a checkup. Yeah. It's like yeah, we're like definitely. doctors. We're like, you right. So, so how long ago checkup? was that? About a week. So I took maybe three, four days off. Um, but then since then, <laughs> I've been able to train. Casual three, four days yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, probably about three days. And then on the fourth day, did a night shoot so like pretty oh, much yeah. four days mm -hmm. um and then yeah went and did a bit of a shoot um out in exeter and was able to train fully without any pain so so it's okay now yeah yeah it's feeling okay now like Sick. my yeah joints are all right at the moment so mm -hmm. just lifting a bunch is your body in general else. pretty good nowadays because the way you train anyway yeah i, I think, think so um i think the, the the problem is at the moment is i just run the risk of overtraining so it's not that i'm like injuring myself from like taking big impacts and stuff that 
at the moment I just really enjoy training and mm-hmm. I really enjoy lifting and I really enjoy doing running and I, like all these You're other just things. Not, not the yeah, yeah, I just yeah. I just neglect resting like all the time mm-hmm. and like people around me are like Ed you need to take a rest and I'm just like oh okay I will for like three or four hours and then I'm like well I may as well just, I may as well just <laughs> go for a run now like what like, do you do when not, you're resting what's that yeah see this this is the thing but to be fair like I'm slowly getting into sort of the YouTube thing and on the rest days I've now just decided like okay edit. take a full day out do an edit like, yeah, yeah. Put, put something together mm-hmm. so it's not like I'm doing nothing all day but I, I just find it so hard. You need to get into like yeah. a really fiddly hobby, like carving spoons yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> something where you just Model sit. trains or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warhammer. Like. Yeah. See, that is the thing. All of my interests that I do outside of parkour are just also pretty yeah. physical as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So yeah. how often do you train parkour? Parkour? Well, during the winter, obviously a lot less because of the weather. Just um, five days out of seven. I <laughs> know. <laughs> oh, I'm just waiting. For yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mention something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, so in like at the moment, I've probably trained the last week, mm-hmm. maybe one day. Oh no, I took like two days and did other stuff on those two days. So yeah, if I'm not training parkour, then I'm going to the gym and lifting. And if I'm not lifting, then I'm doing parkour. Wow. And then I try and run as well if I can. Is Sometimes there any- you eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes oh, man, I eat so much. <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> On the same level as Callum? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no, I don't know actually. He ate two large um, what are those what are those dishes called? Uh not the Pax Kokoro? Do you know what, what that it? is? No. Like a no. noodle noodle place? Oh, it's like a noodle oh, place okay. in Brighton and he had two larges and I don't know how he did that. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. unreal. Yeah. yeah, I remember the first time I had pizza with him and I thought he was ordering for someone else as well. And it was yeah. just <laughs> us two. And he got two large pizzas and then just ate them in front of me. I was like, what the fuck? Can so he still easy. do that though? Because I, I swear I heard him say like a while ago that he had like food poisoning and then since he's come back oh, with food really? poisoning, he hasn't been able to eat I don't so know. Much. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I've heard that from someone, I don't know. Mm. So um, is there anyone any of your friends that you train with or just in general that keep up with you on the same level as like training as much as you or so I I think I'm really lucky where I have loads of friends in the things that I do so Mm. when I go to train parkour there's always people I can go and train parkour with Um, and yeah I live in Exeter which is a pretty small place but I train with like Richie and Ben quite a lot Um, and then if I'm there not out then I'll go to Taunton and train with Josh and Max, and if they're not out, then I'll come up to Bristol. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, that's I'll, options. Then. Yeah, yeah that's like, so good. There's mm. it within like an hour and a half radius. There's like three different groups that I can go and train with. Um, so when one group's exhausted because they've trained with you like <laughs> half the week. Well, yeah, like if someone's not out, then I'll go and train someone <laughs> yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's yeah. amazing. And then yeah, like lifting wise, I've got like three different gyms that I can go to, and then as well as like a pure gym. So like wow. I have like some friends in a place called Ottery, which is the Move Forward Gym, which is like an awesome place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I go like pretty much train CrossFit there with those guys. Yeah. So I was going to sort of touch on this. So you've, it feels like, I'm mean, it's it's Tim Champion's like little cabin where you do a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but then it feels like recently you've kind of let, stepped it up and you're going to that like yeah, so an actual gym, like the Brick World yeah. proper CrossFit gym. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've been doing some like proper sessions. Yeah, like, man. Because CrossFit's. It's- Fucked. It, like, oh, mate, it's what does unreal. CrossFit entail? Like, what, what? So it's it's pretty much just like all of the physical stuff that you would do in a normal gym, but you do it like in like crazy, what they're called wads, which is just like workouts. And you yeah. do them like so you do like squats, and you go and do ring muscle ups, and then you'd go and do like squat jumps or something. In what in in a group of. Like it's you do it and then you go straight to the next thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Was so it a demon like, every minute yeah, on the minute? Every minute on the minute. Yeah. And then AMRAP as many reps as possible in a certain time. It's like, it gets, wow. a, it gets, CrossFit gets a really bad rep in the sense that it blew up and then a lot of gyms are like, they don't check your, f- like, they're like, yeah. do a hundred pull-ups and they're like, and yeah. the form goes and then they're like, keep pushing and shit. Yeah. But if you get a good, like I, I did it years ago for a, a, w- a little while but it was fucking I found it so tough oh, but no, the coach no. was amazing he was like one of the sort of better ones in the UK and had a load of like titles and shit and he was very on form in yeah. the sense that like because it's like yeah you do like the and rep or whatever yeah, it's yeah, just like yeah. as many reps as you can and that obviously if you're lifting heavy weight could fuck you but if you get a good coach who's like your, your form shit like you need to lower the weight or stop or whatever then it's like it's yeah. great and it's f- it's so intense. Oh, so often you don't really go with massive weights. Um, yeah, it's not it's not usually like the biggest. You're not like out with out lifting like power lifters or anything like that usually. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's usually like a lot of body weight stuff and then 
yeah, just sort of lightish weights. But man, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's great for stamina, it's, though, oh, man, surely. It's, like. it's, yeah. So I'm feeling like the crossover is definitely there, like between parkour and CrossFit and like weightlifting itself. Like obviously Tom Taylor has been a massive yeah, inspiration yeah, yeah. on me and helped push me in that sort of direction. And then now I'm kind of just seeing, like I'm really enjoying doing Olympic lifts and stuff like that at the moment. So I'm just kind of seeing what the crossover is there. Uh, I, I assume alongside all that, probably maybe stuff that we don't see as much is like, I assume you're pretty on general maintenance of yeah. rolling, stretching, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm obviously not as good as I should be, like, but I don't think anyone is. No, when it comes yeah. to stretching. I think everyone will say that too. Yeah, 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 but like I, yeah, because at the end of the day, like I'm doing all this stuff so that I can be better at parkour. And if I do something silly, like, I don't know, not stretch out after a session or mm -hmm. not stretch out after a week or something like that and get an injury, I'm just going to be fuming at myself. Like, yeah. I won't be able to train. Because um, I think I... I That's maybe... why you need the spoon carving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go and do some trains or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, j yeah, I just want to do parkour and be better at parkour so i think that's why this crossover stuff is happening so yeah we've kind of dived into a topic that we were gonna i guess sort of is further down the list but mm. it's, it's it's such a prominent one because it's like i think what people think of when they think of you and like select other athletes like tim champion obviously daryl yeah as mm. well like there are well i mean what have we got here it's it's basically like we we're talking about this we were talking about yesterday we and it's yeah. like what was bloggy who put was it yeah bloggy yeah who's, who sort of said this first there are like just a select, not a select few, but there's obviously a, there's a portion of the community who train actually like athletes. Mm. Not that other people are not doing athletic things, but it's like you guys train like kind of it's your career. Well, it is obviously it's your career, but you yeah. you fucking train and, and you cross train. Sorry, that's the door opening. <laughs> um, and yeah, you train other things to better your training and you, you, you take it fucking seriously, but not in like a sort of, lame anal way you just you care yeah like has that been there since i mean we're gonna cycle back to your kind of origin story so to speak with gymnastics and things i yeah, assume yeah. that was an influence yeah definitely who's rustling a bloody paper yeah get out it's travis. travis and max jesus christ hmm. <laughs> um yeah so like i assume that was a big yeah so yeah, for those that don't know, I do have a gymnastics background. Like I started gymnastics when I was two years old. Um, wow. Yeah, in, in a, like we used to live in Scotland and then we moved down to the UK um, and moved down to a place called Exeter. And my mum was just looking for things for me to do. And she just stumbled across gymnastics. Nice. Went to the gymnastics club and yeah, started at two. And then I've, I still go back there now. Like I've been there ever since really. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did gymnastics till I was about 14, 15. And then took the step across to do parkour from there. Sick. And then, but yeah, like the, the the strength and the conditioning and the stretching and stuff that gymnastics taught me definitely put me in a beneficial position to try and apply that to now parkour. Mm -hmm. and I think you you can see that when you train, like especially when I train. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's watching or listening, the kitchen is on the other side of the wall to us, and uh, Travis is he's sorting his lunch. Um, as long as I mean the rustling was louder than the microwave. Just that's do, fine. Just do your bits. We've clarified it now. Yeah. It's fine. Travis is being an athlete. He's probably making a pot noodle or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, what sort of what are your thoughts around the people who are sort of pushing levels? I guess to a similar level that uh, that you like when you watch. Obviously, you watch people and you admiration and things. Yeah. But do you internally are, are you like fuck? I really wish these other people would be training more seriously because you are you like. Do you have concern? I don't know. I don't know what like yeah. headspace you're so, in. So for me, I it's, it's kind of strange. I don't see myself as a massively um, naturally talented athlete. Uh, okay. So I think uh, like in my, in my gymnastics career, I was good at gymnastics. I wasn't good enough to go to the next level. Yeah. So I wasn't good enough to then compete for England or whatever. I competed nationally and I would, went to the British gymnastics training camp once or twice. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was really good. But then I wasn't good enough to then get to the next level. Yeah. So then I took that mindset of like conditioning and working hard into parkour. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've been able to do what I do in parkour now. So do you think if you kind of weren't supplementing your parkour training with other things, you would be sort of not nearly as good as you are? Now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just don't think I'd have the same confidence that I do now. Yeah. So I, I like I, for that double side flip, I have the confidence to 
to do a double side flip and know that I'll probably be okay. Like mm. I've I've watched the bell back and I was like, obviously I took a t- had to take a couple of days off or whatever for training. But I look at back and I'm like, it's a g- oh actually the prime example is the souk full that I did at NAPC the knee clip, the knee. The knee clip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so I think in that situation then if I hadn't have been lifting and if I hadn't been paying attention to conditioning and stuff like that then that could have been really serious yeah because your leg in the like we went through a frame by frame your leg yeah. gets spangled but yeah. somehow it's fine so I hit right. the corner of a wall yeah if you haven't seen the video I hit the corner of a wall and my right right or left, I don't know one of my legs hyper extends over a wall and then peels off to the side while upside down doing a souk fall like, yeah yeah. I, I, should, I don't really know why I did it again if I'm honest but I, <laughs> yeah that was on the second go the first go I landed perfectly I was like oh no I'll do it again it'll be fine yeah, yeah. Um, but still yeah, won so yeah, yeah no it went well <laughs> um, but yeah like that that sort of thing there of like just priming my body and making sure that I'm strong enough to take these things. Yeah. And um, that's, that's kind of the avenue and the, the way I, I look at it. Like from your personal p- opinion, do you think, cause I know, like I look at myself and I'm like, I know I should be exercising more and doing like, I mean, like I do a decent amount of cardio weekly, but like yeah. strength training, I'm like, I should be doing more because I know for like, I've got a week back. Yeah. So there's all these things I personally know, but do you think sort of the, the average parkour practitioner should be looking to supplement their training more or like do you think it's sort of do you think, it, I think see it's where more, your strengths are yeah like, it's more of like a, a personal thing like i i went to the started going to the gym on my own and then started talking to tom and then got into it that way and then from there i just i really enjoy it like i go mm-hmm. i enjoy going to the gym i enjoy lifting weights i enjoy doing deadlifts and all these things and out of that is bought like going to like crossfit stuff and uh, going on runs and stuff like that i just really enjoy being physical yeah so on the days that i can't train i like i look forward to going and doing something else um i i do think that in the parkour community there's there is a need for maybe people to do a little bit more conditioning or maybe a little bit more like rehabilitation stuff Mm -hmm. i see like people taking quite a long time out of uh, out of training for something that they maybe could have done something about in beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, but then that's like, that's not some people's, that they don't want to do that. They don't, they just want to go and train parkour and yeah, I fully yeah. respect that. Like yeah. mm-hmm. he's like some of the, like Dom, one of the top people in the world is he just goes out and trains parkour and George as well. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. one of the most insanely talented athletes just goes and does parkour. Like George is such a fucking, like it's weird. Yeah. I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Dom yeah. and George are like anomalies anyway. They're, which like, I was trying to think of the word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, Dom like, really base Dom's good at rehab and he's got his background of ice skating which obviously he he had that intense like physical yeah but george has his runescape background <laughs> <laughs> he's been trying that hard finger. on that yeah, yeah. that clicking it's finger really grindy yeah. so i feel like <laughs> yeah parkour it's the same yeah. um but yeah it's fucking it's sick i i really enjoy seeing like your i think probably just because it's like um it reminds me that i should be doing more mm. if you know what i mean mm. but when you're like that the, the photos you posted recently which were like look like a pro, like a pro photographer was like at the gym or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. i just like shit like that like seeing people i'm like sick that person's like mm-hmm. doing good shit with yeah. their body like, i just uh, yeah like I, I just enjoy it like it, yeah. it, it started off as something to benefit my parkour career and it's still that thing but i also just like i really enjoy going because sometimes uh especially for me at the moment parkour is so mental at the moment for me mm-hmm. it's not necessarily can i clear that gap it's can i do a flip and clear that gap can i put my head in a sort of mental space to take on a challenge flip to a rail or mm-hmm. i don't know do a sort of worm cast pre or something like that it's it's entirely mental pretty much well i guess like we were talking with travis i mean this this episode is going to come out a little bit after travis's one but we were talking about sort of the capstone shooting and like your your training day to day is not always your max physicalness exactly yeah yeah and it's like your but what you're doing is you're training and then you have those moments where you take it up yeah yeah mm. um uh, but it, like i was saying it's super nice to like really wear out your mental training and go and do something that's mentally draining and stuff like that but then i feel like at the moment i don't really get like massively physically tired from doing parkour yeah like obviously like if i have to grind for a clip then i'll be shattered after or whatever but if I'm going out for like a day's training, I can pr- like a train consistently throughout the day. So sometimes it's nice to go to the gym and then just like purely physical. It's, n- it's like I can deadlift a weight. Like there's no real, there's no real risk to it. Yeah. And I can just like wear myself out and be like, okay, so I'm physically tired as well now. Is there, is there a reason why you can do that? Only just because personally, I think probably just not training enough. But like you can train throughout the whole day. Yeah, that's like the thing that everyone says about it. Like, like he doesn't. For me, that's like a dream. Like I wanna, I wanna be doing that. Yeah. But like whenever we go to a new spot, whenever I've been out training with you, you do the same amount of things you did at the spot before, 
to the next spot to the next, next spot, spot. Yeah. and that's so fun yeah that means the whole day is consistently fun with training i just yeah i think you you get to a stage of like you train so much that it just becomes normal to then do that mm. it's definitely not something that i've just been able to do straight away yeah like, your stamina's just improved and improved it's, and improved, it's just getting it? better yeah. and better and then like the the supplementation of going for runs and stuff like that i think is helping in that situation sure, yeah but um like especially when i'm training with you guys or something like that it's often we're training for a project or we're doing some sort of video or something like that Mm -hmm. So for that project that I don't know if you've talked about at all. Yeah, we have a bit. Okay, yeah. yeah. But like I was with you guys for a day and you were shooting a video. So I was like, right, I need to be on form here. And especially yeah. for the breach tour is like, uh, when am I going to get the opportunity here to train with 14 or whatever, 10 of the best athletes in the UK, go on this tour and train with them? Like that's, it just doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. So why not make the most of it? That's like, the mentality I love, like especially from more when I'm behind the camera like Mark's when we did like spitting in the wind Mark's came into it and he was just he was like you at the start I mean all the way through but his he just was constant and I remember him just saying at one point like somebody asked him like you're not stopping he was like I'm here for a purpose yeah, like, yeah. I am I have been flown to America to do what I do which is parkour yeah. it's like why would I sit around doing nothing that, it's like I am here yeah, for this that's amazing and that's how I feel because like you can like as someone editing as you guys know editing like you can never have too much footage it's mm -hmm. like if no. i'm gonna do a line and exactly. i'll just do it anyway it might end up on instagram it might up in the edit it might not like i'll have content there but you guys then it gives you guys the options to play with that mm -hmm. um i know I think, you you really did especially for the bristol bit saved it quite 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 a lot <laughs> <I was just laughs> like, yeah you, but that's like, yeah that's you guys, it you guys don't come here often mm -hmm. i can get to show you like my favorite spots in bristol um mm -hmm. or one of them we only went to one spot yeah. <laughs> here just in castle park all day but um, it was a good day but yeah no it was a great day but yeah like mm -hmm. when when am i going to get the opportunity to then be a part of this project and then i can look back on it and be like oh i mm -hmm. gave him my all on that day or for the breach one i was just like yeah this is the perfect opportunity we have the best like cameras we have the best people we've got the best atmosphere at the moment Mm -hmm. why not just like go ham and you can take a week off after like mm. yeah. i don't like um I was what are you gonna do in that week off ah, no, you no, are training. Yeah. <laughs> go training yeah um yeah i, I don't know I, I like i'm i'm wasn't gonna not save myself for the trip like do mm -hmm. the trip as hard as i can and then after i can sort it all out then stretch yeah. even more or whatever like loosen it all down um but yeah so when are you going to be a Gymshark athlete? Oh, mate. Well, as soon as they want me, because I'm a Gymshark, like, pick well, this me is up. The thing. I saw <laughs> it would be the perfect, perfect mate, collaboration. You went perfect up there. Thing, I mean. Yeah, I went there. It was cool. Like, yeah, it looks I, sick. I got there. I went there through like uh, another gig and just met met some cool people there. And like, um, I don't know, they're, they're, the way they pick athletes is pretty like insane and stuff. So I don't think it would ever sort of come my way. But like, I, I still enjoyed that opportunity. I, I feel like if anyone's going to get it, it would be you because you are the, like, yeah, you're the culmination of kind of what they put out in terms yeah. of content and what they stand for, but also obviously you've got the parkour. Like. I think you'd passionately back it as well. Rather yeah, than yeah. it'd be very just, genuine, yeah. Yeah, exactly, rather I do, than yeah. something like, else. I've, I have a couple of their clothes and stuff and I do like them just to, to lift in. I, I have not the t-shirts are nice to train, like parkour and stuff. Um, but yeah, like it, might, it would be pretty mad. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and I think the the and like another benefit of me going to the gym and doing lifting and sort of getting sort of into the CrossFit space is it is now making me more appealing to other brands. For sure. Which isn't like isn't a bad thing if it's something that I'm enjoying. And like also, there's it, a lot more. There's a lot more. I mean, there's bigger. There's, there's bigger brands and more brands like yeah, all exactly. the protein supplement brands, etc. And they actually have the capital that they can. Yeah, support like they're you. in. They're, they've been around for years and years and yeah. years. Whereas parkour hasn't been around. Have you got long. any like partnerships at the moment? Um, not at the moment. I was working with Noco for a while, uh, um, yeah, but yeah. I've like kind of eased off that slightly. I'm trying to yeah see about other things at the moment. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, like I even even working those is, was so great, and a couple of opportunities that like I went with those guys to the. The Gymshark place. And oh, okay. So met some like incredible people out. You didn't just meet working with Nocco. Ben. No, no, no. I, I didn't meet him. But I, I got to see the. I was more excited to gym if I'm yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, but like the facility that you had. Shove him out of the way. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> that's <was laughs> amazing. Wakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that was mm -hmm. sick. Yeah. Um, should we should we roll back a tiny bit and just? Yeah. I'll take my jumper off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before we do that, when we were talking about like stamina within parkour and things, yeah. Um, do you ha do you ever have a problem with, or maybe not a problem, but how fast are your parkour eyes with when you come to a spot, maybe a new spot or maybe a spot you've been to quite a lot? Are you quite quick to find things that you personally want to do? 
or is does it sometimes take you by surprise and you're like quite a while for you to find something so it really depends on what i'm doing so if i'm there for a day's training i try and really think about doing stuff that i wouldn't normally do um and that obviously takes longer and it's really influenced by who like who i'm training with like so the other day we were training in reading and i was training with joe scandrett mm -hmm. and i ended up doing like a swing gainer from like an undergrip oh yeah, yeah into the slope and stuff yeah, like that, that yeah. so like that's something that i would never usually do yeah um but that was super like super cool experience and like i really i really enjoy bouncing off people like, yeah i think because i think yeah go on well i was just gonna say you you I guess sort of one because of your general skill set also because like you've kind of got almost like that Joey Adrian ability of you could put yourself in kind of any environment and come up with a line because you have really good flips you've got really good parkour like you can put together something kind of anywhere but I assume the stuff that like makes you feel satisfied at the end of the day are those things where it's the standout yeah. like yeah exactly so like if if I am just going for a day of training I'll try and just bounce off what other people are doing so if I know I'm training with you say or if I'm training with Travis or I'm training with other people like that then I try and lean into what they're doing yeah as opposed to get them to come and do what I'm doing yeah mm -hmm. um and I think that's amazing about parkour is we have so many different styles and stuff that you can really just bounce off people really well if mm. I'm shooting for a video then I will try and do what I do yeah. as, as best I can. Because I guess you know you can do that, yeah, to the it, next year. Yeah, exactly. So that's like kind of the capstone mentality. You're you're mm -hmm. taking your best stuff and trying to put that in an environment. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I do that as well with competition and stuff like that. Try yeah. and take my best stuff and put it in the environment that I'm given. Um, so yeah, if I'm shooting for a video, it would be stuff like that pretty much. It'd be mm -hmm. like, okay, where's the where's this like side pre gonna be? Where's this court pre gonna be? Sukahara, Katahara all those sort of things that I'm like quite well known for. Where can I do those in this environment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a balancing act because you just don't want to be that person. Yeah. You don't mm. want to be like, oh, Ed only does suits. Yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think for those people that are listening that are like building their way up in the, in the scene or whatever, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong in being that person as long as you use it to your advantage. Yeah. So like when I was, when I was kind of building my name slightly, I used to do a ton of double corks and I still do now. Mm -hmm. um, but then I really didn't want to like be known as that sort of person. So I, I got to the level that I was at and then I was able to sort of branch out. Like you were saying with Travis, he, he was the Kongena guy, but now everything else is leveled. Yeah. And now we spread yeah, out. Yeah. Um, and I think there's nothing wrong in it's being that It's kind of person. almost the, a great way to get your name out there because yeah. of like social media. I mean, you think about Dom, like he is, kind of still the front flip guy because yeah. nobody's caught up with him but mm. he but less so in my head definitely less so yeah flip, yeah but less so like front flip off really high shit like yeah. i know he does it but, all but the time the, but the build but up it's the just, build up to dom was that was it, it was so that, exactly. his instagram was like and it's still every friday flips. just did a ridiculous mm. front flip and it was amazing to watch and he, and he engaged that. really well yeah and, and he then can use there, it into like pre's and shit like front mm. big front flip pre's yeah, and all of yeah. that and now and now mm. like same same with him when he goes and trains with joe he does some sort of weird thing and like has a mm. good time with it like it, do, it doesn't have to be worried necessarily about always doing this banger thing you mm. can just like kind of relax into it and go okay i'm gonna try this and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah, yeah. but like yeah I, yeah again i don't think there's anything wrong with being that person as no. long as you use it to your advantage and then kind of spread out yeah more. and you're kind of self-aware yeah yeah right. i think knowing you're you're turning into that sort of thing and yeah. having people around you going oh, okay you've done like quite a lot of these maybe try something else yeah because george is exactly the same with double fools and side uh, double well, he side. was double side guy, double side and double fool yeah it was just yeah, like that yeah. was his thing and that like that was an amazing skill that not a lot of people could do so he used it to his advantage he, used, he did like quite a lot of them and then now he's if you just scroll very page, you just, yeah. you just watch it and it's just incredible like yeah, yeah now yeah. he i don't think i can't remember the last time he did a double side yeah but mm -hmm. you, you don't remember that anymore because you now know that he's oh my god he's just yeah. like, talented. speaking of george actually you recently just went out to um where was it saudi saudi yeah, yeah. Mm. not obviously it was meant to happen with george and then it got split yeah yeah so you were what coaching for six weeks yeah so so i run through the whole like how that kind of came about yeah yeah so i got a message on instagram from um a company called flight which is the company that took me out there yeah so i got a message on them to go and in 2019 and they messaged me saying look um we're bringing a bunch of saudi kids to morzine in france for 10 days do you want to come and coach and i was like yeah why not yeah so i replied to the message kind of got things ordered and then went out to france and coached for 10 days and really enjoyed it like had a great time with the kids met the john the guy that owns the sort of company um and heber as well which is his wife 
Um, and yeah, it just like was like, oh, these guys are really sound. They're doing really interesting things for parkour, especially in Saudi Arabia, where it's so small out there. Yeah. Um, and then I got invited out in 20, it must have been end of 2019, because 2020 Corona hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went out to Saudi and had a great time. I'd spent two weeks out there in Jeddah. Um, and then recently I went out again to Riyadh, where they'd now built a gym. Um, and I was out there for six weeks. I think, I think it was six it was. weeks. Yeah, yeah, I was out there for a while. Um, coaching in that gym in Riyadh. I did a couple of things in a couple of schools as well. And then over in Jeddah as well. And yeah, I was, I was, we were meant to go out at the same time as George, but things didn't quite align for that. Um, yeah. And then it ended up, I did six weeks and then he went out and did six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so we had like a contract with the school. So I was coaching the school for a little bit. And then when I came back, George went out and did the same thing. Sick. Um, but yeah, they're like such a great company and, and someone I'm going to be working with more closely in the future. Sick. Um, and do you like coaching? Yeah. 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 So I, I coached gymnastics from, you know, I was meant to Three. coach from 14, but I was coaching a bit younger than that. Like <laughs> <laughs> from Fucking 14, hell. yeah, if anyone's watching. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was coaching a little bit younger than that, like helping out and I was really enjoying it. Like just being able to sort of pass on knowledge and pass on information um, to just help people learn new skills and stuff. And I like, it's something that I really enjoy. Um, and then now being able to get, given the opportunity to go out and coach that to people that have never done it before again, which is yeah, quite yeah. cool. Yeah, the gym looks sick. And the kids yeah. as well, like some yeah. of the stuff George was posting at them were really cool. Some of the kids mm -hmm. are really, and it, the, that gym's only been about for like a month, three months. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, so that's really new there and the kids are flying through already. And yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty, it's an interesting place. It's a crazy place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like, I really enjoyed it. I had a good time out there. What Sick. was your like training balance with coaching and stuff? Was that so when I was over there, it wasn't yeah, it was it was pretty good to be fair. Like we were training, it's probably the same amount as early training mornings, here. right? But yeah, like yeah. So that was the only thing is, is it really hot? Yeah, man, it was like forty degrees. Yeah, like it was in. It just looked hot. It's just weird how hair dry video was. on your face. It looked yeah, hot. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. Like yeah, we we had to get up at like six, train at like six thirty. You could probably train till about eight eight thirty, and then it's horrible. And like, then it's like thirty two degrees, thirty five degrees. The air like, in the gym. Yeah, the aircon in the gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the saving grace of that place, like, and like in cars and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, when I shot, yeah, I, I shot that project with Kai like yeah, a few years ago in Dubai. Is that the cyclist guy? No, no, I didn't shoot anything. I, I shot a, uh, some stuff at X Dubai with Kai Whoa. in Dubai, and it was like, it just the way I described it is, it feels like you've walked. Any, anytime you walk out of an air conditioned building, it feels like somebody just has a hairdryer on full blast. Not necessarily the wind, but mm -hmm. like. It's just like, it's just, it's just radiation. Hot. Yeah. It's just so fucking hot. And we were doing shoots at like 4.30 till nine. And yeah, by yeah. nine, you are dripping, you're like holding wow. out. Yeah. And, and it, you're it, tired and you're like, your body clock's like, what the fuck's going on? Did you yeah. climatize? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like when I was out there, I was like, God, it's a bit chilly today. And it's like 36 <laughs> degrees. I was like, oh what? yeah, it's much colder than yeah. it was the other Surely day. Surely coming back must have been so weird. So I went out in November mm. and fucking then hell. came back, yeah. And it was like sort of the build up to Christmas or whatever. And it, everyone was just like inside miserable in the rain. And I was just like outside training at 6.30 in the morning in the blazing sun. I was like, wow, yeah. that bad. Yeah, bad yeah. At all. Um, but wow. yeah, like, and it, in Jeddah, it's like insanely humid, but in Riyadh, it wasn't too bad. So we could, oh, okay. we could train for like a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to Jeddah, I was like, I can't train outside and this. this is insane. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, nothing on the UK weather system. <laughs> <laughs> so like, obviously we kind of touched on gymnastics and I don't want to spend sort of too, too long in it, but, and, yeah. and obviously it, it definitely created a foundation for your like movement and oh, mentality and things. Also like regime in terms of, do you think how you've kind of, you, I, I wouldn't say you're like strict, but you, you keep yourself to a Yeah. Thing. So yeah, for, I used to do gymnastics four times a week for three and a half hours a day. So each yeah. time, each session was like long sessions. Um, and I think more subconsciously than consciously, that's like crept into my parkour career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when I'm out training, I wanna, wanna make the most of the training session and then try and stretch and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like I, I think I- <laughs> Food stunt. <laughs> Food stunt. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely owe a, oh. Yeah, go on, cross. Go on, you can cross the camera. Cameo. Sa how you got four sausage rolls. Four sausage rolls. <laughs> Jesus, Travis. Wow. You know what? No, I'm all right. I mean, I do, but I'm not going to eat it on. Yeah. <laughs> like this crumbly. <laughs> I appreciate the offer so much. Thank you. Um, and and so I assume gymnastics was an entrance to kind of competitions and like the mindset around competitions. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So, so yeah, I, I obviously competed from a young age and then 
did more and more competitions throughout gymnastics. And the weird thing about gymnastics is that you are always training for a competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that a lot of people struggle with. Yeah. Um, you're, you're literally there to do, learn new skills, then put them in a routine and then put them into competition. Um, and I, I, I guess I kind of do that now for with parkour. Um, maybe that's more subconscious than conscious. But um, I think the, the beauty about parkour and why that's more appealing to most people is that you can just train skills to do it. Like you can just train skills because it's enjoyable and you learn something new. Yeah. Um, whereas in gymnastics, that doesn't really happen. Like I, I still follow like a bunch of gymnasts on Instagram and stuff, and they're always still training like new moves on high bar and new moves on rings and stuff. Just like for that. the purpose of going. Just for the purpose of putting that into a routine. Yeah. Um, and then the fulfillment they get is when they complete their routine in a competition environment. Yeah. Um, which is which is different to parkour, but I guess the way some people are training at the moment is different kind strokes, of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't um, think there's anything wrong with either or. No, no, not at all, because it's still something you're enjoying at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, as long as you're enjoying it, then yeah, it's that's, yeah, then that what is the other thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like if you're enjoying doing it for competitions and then in competition having that feeling, like and that's the best thing to do for you. Um yeah, yeah, I love watching you in competitions, just more like the preparation for it and things. I like yeah. seeing someone actually work towards it so seriously. Because obviously it's nice to see as well, like people going in it relaxed too. Yeah. But oh it's, man, it's I like not wish I could go into it relaxed. You really go in, yeah, like, but it's just relaxed. like seeing you prep the souk full, mm. like you're doing it so many times and it's just, I don't know what it is about watching that. You're like, fuck, like, I really hope that you nail it because the work you're putting into it. And that's what I mean. Like I, I'd hate, yeah. I don't like going into competitions where I know that I am under practiced at a certain skill. Like mm. I mm. like to call it when I think I've done enough. Yeah. The weird thing for NAPC was the NAPC qualifier was like, 15 minutes oh fuck go me and, that go was and learn mad something. And yeah oh 15 my god minutes? yeah that all you was, had? it was the it, most recent one 15. it was really rad. i take those 15 looking for stuff yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was like the on-site qualifiers was in that one gym it's like 15 20 minutes Hectic. or something like that and oh i must have been awful to be around like i was just like <laughs> i'm going to do this now and if i land on someone so be it like, yeah i because i just i really don't talk to me yeah literally yeah, i just yeah. really like to be in control of the situation of like okay i want to do this this and this and i need to practice it this many times and if i don't do that then i'm not going to feel confident mm. and then i'm not going to be able to perform with as much confidence as I can. I love, like, it's such a sort of privilege to be able to like be at comps kind of from like, you know, the first day to the end yeah. and seeing like you and, and others f go in from the first time with fresh eyes and then prep and build. Because I mean, it's, it is nice to see things like with like, whatever you call it, like you, you, you know, you just see a, you see a line and you're like, whoa, the whole thing's blown away. But it's so nice seeing someone build and especially someone like you. Like the thing I love about your lines is I'll be in the gym for days watching you. Like in NAPC, they have all the training sessions yeah, and I'll yeah. be helping out with it or whatever. And I'll see you prepping different things. And in my head, I can get a build up for your run is gonna be. And then I'll see your run come together and like as it gets closer to the final day and things. And then you know, like watching you, it's just, it's watching execution is the sickest thing. Yeah. Because like you will then stand there and you have your fucking pose. You're like, like that and you do your thing and everyone has their own like starting position yeah, and, you yeah, have yours. Yeah. and it's like it's like in my head i i because I, i've seen your run come together i have a list in my head of the things that i know you're going to hit and you have the same thing yeah and you just go there tick there tick Literally. there tick yeah, there, yeah. Tick. Mm -hmm. and like even if there's a stumble or whatever it's like it's it's just it's execution and it's fucking sick because it's there's no hesitation there's no like some athletes like do 70, 80% of the line and there's a little bit like, uh, like they, they overshoot something and then they have to go like, um, oh, I'm going back here. Yeah, yeah. But you literally are just like, boom, 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 <laughs> I, boom. I and just, then you finish, boom. Yeah, <laughs> it, just, it all comes out of the end. It's yeah. so it sick. It all comes out of the end. And, and I, I, I hate the feeling of not performing at my best. Yeah. Or like after a competition, if I've, if I've fallen in the competition or whatever, I'm just so frustrated at myself. So just like, practicing and giving myself the best possible opportunity to then be prepared for the competition just it, it, it for me it makes so much sense like i'll try and be the first to be there and the last to leave um but not necessarily training the whole time but i'll just be going through my run i'll be filming what i'm going to do ma making like mental notes of okay you need to step left foot here left foot here and just going over sort of those things like that like um on the boat uh, for Art of Motion, yeah. I know that when I've conged up onto the main deck into the side pre, I need to step my left foot first. Yeah, mm -hmm. like and that if I don't step my left foot first, then my right foot will be wrong at the end. Whereas so some people, 
kind Cons- of they think about that, but it's kind of just like I'll I'll do my thing. Like, yeah, and but that goes but wrong quite a lot of the time. I just it? But just just the way that it works for me is just I'm like I need to I need to be prepared for it because otherwise I know I'm not very good on the fly. Like mm. I'm I can't really make stuff up very good. Yeah. So that if I if something does go wrong, I remember watching um, maybe you filmed this actually, Jesse, for one of the art emotions he was in his room or something writing down notes or something like that was it for the off the edge tour maybe yeah and i just i just remember him thinking like i remember him saying that he was planning his roots but also planning roots for contingency roots yeah 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 and that kind of stuck with me i was like that makes sense like if something were to go wrong what am i going to do how am i going to react to it and what can i then put on to the end to make it happen because you see so many people have amazing runs but as soon as they fail the third thing, that's it. It's it all out the window. The yeah. yeah, it just, you mm-hmm. lose the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and even if they can get back on track a second later to like, they miss a bit out, you can see it's not just, them. They're now flustered. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I just try and have like, okay, so if I do this double back here and I under rotate, I'll roll back and then I'll come up and I'll go around a different way to get to the same sort of place. Yeah. But having contingency plans and having like, things there ready to go and mental notes to kind of check yourself i think is for me that that's how i am able to perform at competitions i think the thing that has become so evident in parkour and whether it's like you in like a competition mindset or like travis in just like a training mindset is at the end of the day the people who put in the effort and kind of take it somewhat seriously are getting the results like obviously there are people who kind of just are pretty chill with parkour and like things go well for them and things and it's like in some i think in some circles or in sort of some people are like oh it's a bit lame to like take things seriously Mm. but it's like at the end of the day if you have a goal and you take it seriously and you break down that and you aim for that yeah you get the results yeah i i never really understood the whole like try hard (coughs) thing like well so i i just wanted to maybe tap into this like before you sort of dive into that yeah. add add on because also i remember like as you were coming up it was like oh ed's got the gymnastics background mm. and it, there was a yeah. certain stigma around that so like i yeah. sort of i don't know what your thoughts that, are that always made me laugh because obviously i was training with tim a lot as well yeah um, and a guy called steve jay who they're like the two guys that yeah. i started with the most um and i i still kind of hear it now of people just sort of coming into the sport but then they're going oh but he's got this background and it, it just by it just like blows my mind like we have tried really hard at this sport. Like <laughs> we've like, it's not that we've like just gone into gymnastics and just learned everything in a year and now we're sick. Like we had to learn the things that everyone's learning anyway. We just mm-hmm. learned, we, we were lucky because we learned at a younger age. Yeah, you learn um, it younger and it's probably a slightly safer and better environment. And like a fast, a more accelerated environment. Yeah, for yeah, exactly. Like, but it doesn't mean that we haven't tried really hard to learn these skills. <laughs> like, it's not like, oh, you've, yeah, you've, you, oh, you've got the gymnastics background. Of course you can do a triple flyaway. Like that's, you, you we've had to learn just, those skills as it is. Yeah. It's just weird um, that people care about it in general. Yeah, I think everyone's so individual. Everyone's like individual, and like, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, yeah. And the, the, the thing I found really hard coming from gymnastics into parkour was the straight lines, and I found that really hard to break down. You can probably see that in, Is it in like, straight lines. So, like um, front flip, and then you're rolling over the top of your head. Or yeah. I find it so difficult to learn a side flip. Like really, so hard. It took me forever to learn a side flip. And that's, like a yeah, cork and stuff like because I never you never rotate on that axis yeah. in gymnastics. It's and I think like, I think you you and other sort of gymnastic background people in the early days I, I said basically i'm sure like when you were coming onto the scene i probably in my head whether or not sort of not necessarily like a critical thing but like i mean your basically your movement now is is you it's very Ed Scott, yeah, yeah. but much earlier it was i think that is one thing that the parkour sort of mind picks up on is like gymnastic stuff is almost a bit too clean like it's you almost a bit too it. perfect you can, you can definitely see it yeah like you can see that when i was first starting gym, um parkour i was doing it with a heavily gymnastics based focus yeah and i guess um, that's why you get a bit like some people sort of they just don't like the style of it yeah it's a bit that easier is to completely give it to fair enough yeah like, that is completely fair enough like there's there's a couple of styles and stuff that like i'm not a fan of and yeah that's fair enough like yeah um but i i yeah obviously just work worked hard to try and break out of those habits and stuff yeah. and the more you do parkour outside naturally that starts to happen anyway yeah um because like doing a a, a dismount the way that i do in gymnastics onto concrete floor is just different to how you would do it in parkour like yeah for sure there are there are crossovers that yeah you was, have to change anyway was there anything else that was quite difficult apart from axis and twisting um like just concrete 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was literally that, was getting, that yeah, a big it was mental scary, thing? Scary, man. Yeah. How? Yeah. Sorry. How? We never actually covered it. How? So you were obviously heavily, heavily into gymnastics. Yeah. How did you find parkour and that transition in? Like, so I was doing gymnastics, um, and I was like competing and doing kind of well in it. Um, but the group that I was in were like accelerating and trying to go off to like do Commonwealth Games and stuff like that. Um, and I just wasn't on their level, wasn't able to keep up. So yeah. then I went over into a sort of side group. Um, which were still training and still competing and stuff, but just not with the same pressures of it. Mm. And then during that time, I was also watching Damien Walters' videos and Tim Sheaf. Um, yeah, I guess I Damien's like, a good crossover for like... Yeah, yeah, obviously a massive tumbling background. Yeah. Um, so I was just watching him and just being like, oh, maybe I'll just have a go at that. And because this group was a little bit more relaxed and stuff, we could kind of get away with a little bit more. And uh, okay. Kind of went over sort of that way. And then from there, my friends were like, oh, maybe we should try this outside onto grass or something like that. And uh, we went out one day and just like, yeah. Because I always used to do like round of backflips in the field, like yeah, in, yeah. in primary school and secondary school and stuff like that. And yeah, but yeah, yeah, it, it was literally just one day we we're like, oh, let's try and take it outside then. Let's so, see, see how that goes. How was learning like more fundamental parkour movements like Kongs, Kongs and things? Yeah. So Kongs were Kongs I already learned. Like, yeah, I guess yeah. It's through vault. Was, yeah, was, like it, the same, through was yeah. it the same split foot takeoff? So no, that was different. That's punch yeah. on. So the the split is different, and split now is still something that I I learned wrong. So I learned it with my right leg forwards, yeah. and I still do a kong with my right leg forwards, but I side foot with my left leg forwards. Oh, so wow. kong fronts, I can't. I can do kong front clears and stuff like that, but I can't do like a kong front pre that well because I can't see, like it's not the same as the side wow, it's like yeah, the yeah. other side. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate of do everything on one side because I hear so many people do like round off one way, twist the other and cycle it one way and cut with the yeah, other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think George is one of those guys, but um, yeah, I like when I was learning, I learned it the wrong way around and now it's still coming back to haunt me. Oh <laughs> man, wow, that's yeah. crazy. What leg do you take off of? Left usually for most. For you just happen to put Kong right. Happen to put my right leg forward for Kong. Yeah, I literally. If you tell me to do that in front of Kong. Double knee clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. <laughs> right. yeah. But is there, there, there's definitely some people who are insanely ambidextrous. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like Bob Reese is one of those guys, isn't it? But I just wonder if there's know. any like undercover ambidextrous people who don't talk about it. Well, so and for they're some just crazy. Things, hopefully, like, for some things it works well, like being mm. able to side flip the same way as you twist. So I'm a left leg takeoff and I twist left. So it's good for double A twists, but it's not good for side falls. We've got a hand wait, up in the wait. audience. What's Travis saying? So you come off your right leg. Your right leg. Yeah. So you take off your left. Yeah. Oh, I do that. Do you? Oh, really? So for like Kong front, you're the wrong way as well? No, I think Kong front. Switch leg. But which way do you side flip? Your right shoulder. So you take off your right leg for your side flip too? Yeah, but we side flip a different way. Oh, so you so mm. so, so I take off my left leg for a side flip, same as me, and then my right leg for a kong. Yeah. So if okay, I want to do a kong front pre, mm -hmm. my legs are the wrong way round. Yeah. But so running pre, what do you take off? Left. Usually left. Left. Mm -hmm. So we just unlocked why these guys have such big kong pre's because they take off their wrong foot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like maybe that's it. I, I think I do take off my wrong foot. I think someone has it. What leg do you take off to a kong? <laughs> How, do you, How do you do a jump? What what foot? So you take off your left leg for a kong? Yeah. No. No, right, right for Kong. And but right, also, but you also take off your right, right for side flips. flips. You're normal. That's, right. that's yeah, yeah, that's how normal people do it. No, because I take I'm off. switched. But when you but do it, he should, but you should, your running pre foot should have been the same as your Kong, really. Yeah, you should. Or just be ambidextrous. Right. Yeah. But to be fair, though, I do massively. That's super fucking interesting. I definitely train uh, running pre's uh, off both legs. And I'm pretty confident Always. taking off both legs. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, like, and when it comes to like, Pole strides and pole tacks and stuff like that. I'm pretty comfortable going off either leg. What about Just I think, like, 180s? They're always one that I don't see that many people. I see. I can. I can. Do that. I'm more confident off my left leg, but I can do it both ways. I don't even know. Like well, I can't even in my head think about how I would do it the wrong way. Really? really? Like the right way? Easy. I can like, I could, in my like head, I can imagine pole. where my feet. But the second I'm now thinking like that, I'm like, which foot goes where? Really? Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like pure parkour movements, I really try and do everything both ways, yeah. just because I feel like the opportunity for stuff to be on the wrong leg is massive during running. Oh, breeze. always. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want to be at yeah, the miss amount miss of time to challenge. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as as we've now cleared, I really enjoy doing parkour. So like, <laughs> if I can go to a spot and not do a challenge, and be like, oh, this sucks. Why mm -hmm. don't I? Why didn't I put the time in before to Man, Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I have wrong is my 180 because I 180 this way all the time, but all my twists are that way. So I can never do, you know when people do like 180 hyper to back full? 
I'm the same, yeah. I Can't kick off it. my left leg and twist right to do a 180. It's because you're kicking off your stronger leg oh, shit. on your yeah, last kick. Yeah, it is, kick. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're all right. Yeah. Okay. It's but fine. You're, you're both, so you're both broken, it's fine. Uh, 180, 360. Is that what you're calling it? I can't <laughs> yeah. <spoke about>, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it up. Um, so you have to so do switch. I had to do it this way. The tornado. Way, so. yeah. The tornado, the school driver. But school <laughs> driver. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I had to do that opposite way. Because it, all it was is going up on the wall, so you're facing it, and then it's just and a then the 360 cat so, leave. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes. I sense. love it when the the podcast gets this techy because you can just it's like the people listening. They're like in their head. We're in just going like, oh left foot like, da, 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 da. Yeah, and people yeah. are like what the fuck are they saying? Half your like, audience just gone. Oh, I can't bother. This. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you should watch it on YouTube because you yeah. can see people turning over their shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, what time have you got to go, Keelan? No, I just got a text saying that my dad's going to try and. Pick oh, up. so we're chilling. Legend. Nice. Okay, we're all good. Um. So do we, we want to? Oh, sorry. What were you gonna say? I can't. I can't see where you're going with this. So. I, I don't know. We're looking at different lists. We're looking at the same list. Uh -huh. What we got on? You go. No, because I was about to move on to something. I was, I was going to move on to something. What were you going to move on to? Storm. Oh, I was okay. Go Whoa. for that. That's more controversial. Yeah. Well, no. I, well, I would. I just want to know what's <laughs> happened. Like, what? What's your take on it? What's happened? And how yeah. are you feeling about it all? So it's pretty much. Website's down, right? Website's down, but website was down before it kind of all went uh, out anyway. Okay. Yeah. So we, we had a problem with the website yeah. uh, as it was. Like, I think all of the orders were going to Lynn instead of going to the warehouse. That's not so, ideal. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So Lynn was then having to do manually putting all the orders uh, to the warehouse. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. Like it. So she took the website down to try and sort that out. Yeah. And then since then, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Um, I think we, we had the same problem as kind of Motors did where it's everyone is so separate. Are you saying Motors has problems? Uh, well, <laughs> you said this in the last podcast, I'm pretty sure, but yeah, you yeah, said like everyone, yeah. everyone is so, so far apart. Yeah, so it makes yeah. it super hard to, I think you guys are, you guys are blessed with, you've got like an amazing space and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you're, yeah, you're doing awesome things. But for Storm, it was um, me and Tim were obviously down in the depths of the Southwest. It kind of became like the new Storm was like, you hendo tim kai and it kind yeah. of but then you were split obviously and also you i mean kai and like you, there were different work um to the priorities going on and, yeah and, and things. yeah so massively like, like so kai then um during probably the last year of it kai really got into this drone stuff yeah um and then was was able to like obviously now make a career of flying drones which is sick yeah and then during uh before that tim was doing ninja warrior course testing and joe went to uni and then so joe went yeah. to uni and then lynn was also just getting like jobs and stuff yeah um, so it was really hard to then come all together and then um all of the editing fell on kai and joe because they lived in brighton and they were the closest together um and we we like we tried to do a couple of youtube videos and stuff like that but it didn't just it didn't really feel as authentic mm -hmm. as um as it as it once did like the filming for the new chapter was like one of the best trips i've been on like kai lynn joe um and obviously me and tim all came down to the southwest and just like had the best time like train with each other like as i'm sure you guys have as well like yeah when you all come together and shoot a project it's amazing Mm -hmm. when you're trying to do like separate youtube videos and pass it around and stuff it just becomes it's hard it's not it's not when it's same. a consistent yeah. thing that needs to be kept yeah. up it's like and our our, our whole thing when when we put out the new chapter was we're only going to release a handful of things but we want it to be with us all together and doing the same sort of thing and then that but then, became but, hard but then when you say stuff like that then you now have to really plan out like okay we're going to go to madrid or we're going to go and do something that we're going to do something else um and then it just becomes really hard because Tim's in Dubai and Kai's in wherever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that just becomes really hard. Yeah. And then, yeah, from there, I was just like, cool, I'm just going to try and now see if I can do my own thing. Yeah. Uh, but still, like, still train with, still train with the guys and, like, obviously love spending time with, with each and every one of them. But it just, it wasn't kind of working together. So. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We're not saying, like, it's completely gone or anything like that. Just like, on the back burner, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just not there as yeah. much anymore. But you've obviously joined Breach last year. Yeah, yeah. So and I was, was working with those guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and you, that, that's what the night shoot was for recently, right? Yeah, so that obviously they've released their new clothing line and stuff. Um, so we're now... I went out and shot some photos with um, Max um, from Bridgewater. Um, that was the other day that was in Taunton that was a really like really fun he's so good at taking photos um, so we went and took some photos for it and then I uh, went into the night shoot for the new line as well um, sick yeah, oh and so you, you uh, so what's this night shoot is this 
Oh, it's just like it's just like a video for promoting the new the new line and stuff. Isn't there's nothing like groundbreaking movement or anything like but that? But there's movement. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. Like, um, I got I got actually. Um, so I did a. This might be another thing on your list. Actually, I did a thing called Street Sessions recently, which was like a. No, I haven't got that. Oh, what is Street Sessions? Oh, sick. Yes, you know, <laughs> don't know about that. Cool. So um, about oh, when was it? It must have been in December. Or maybe just yeah, it would have been December. I did a competition in Exeter, so I did a speed and a skill comp in Exeter. Oh, um, I did see this. Yeah, yeah I forgot. So about I did. I didn't really massively put it out there over everything because I wanted to have a go and see how it would run. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to just organise a jam and a sort of event in in Exeter under the name of Street Sessions, nice. and this was helped out by Flight as well. Um, so they supplied me with like a bit of money to then put towards the winners and stuff like that. Sick. And we got some t-shirts printed and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, we, I literally went to key car park, a spot in Exeter and did a speed comp and did a skill comp, put it all together and just turned out like to be a great day. And mm, the guys yeah, filming, yeah, it was really fun. The guys filming that then I was just like, oh, do you want to do some other projects? And then that kind of led to the breach thing now. Um, uh, but yeah, so that was all you ran that. The streets, much. yeah, man, and I wow. really enjoyed it. Yeah, I really that. enjoyed it. I love that. That's the only fair. spot in Exeter I've ever trained at, and it's actually I love that car. Man, park, it's going. It's going. Is it going? The council, what? yeah, the council have applied for. Well, they can't apply there. For the what council. reason? They are going to destroy it and put houses there. Classic. Yeah. Fuck so you need to make like a fucking stop clapping. You. It's the best spot and only spot in Exeter. <laughs> you need to make it like a final. Video yeah, there. yeah. So we, I was gonna. That was kind of gonna be like the last jam. But then I don't think they're gonna be very quick about destroying no. the whole car park. Yeah. But yeah, like as far as street sessions goes, that's something that I'm gonna start pushing now. Sick. So I want to do one in Bristol, and then I want to do one up north, wow. and then kind of, kind of go everywhere with it, and just like have like you know, um, oh, like they called like hop the block, did the, the outdoor. Spot. Yeah, I was yeah, to say yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. kind spot. of like an own the spot sort of thing. But in the UK, but I want to do, yes. I want to do more of them. So I don't want to like just one little, year. Yeah, yeah I want to oh, do like yeah. five a year or, six or something sick. like that. I really enjoyed own the spot. Yeah. So like if that can be and future you could get like athletes coming in from but like, exactly. are you, yeah, are you yeah. thinking about making because yeah, obviously yeah. own the spots a multi-day thing whereas yeah. are you thinking to keep so it like at, a, at the moment it's just like a one day thing yeah. so I'm the next one I'm going to do is going to be in Bristol and I'm probably going to try and do it in February I want to do it after Project Underground um, and all that sort of stuff happens Sick. and I think it's going to be at two different spots so we're going to move from one spot to another um, and have half a speed comp and half a skill comp at one spot and then kind of everyone moves through the city together and then we go to the next sport and half a skill and half a speed in the next uh, this spot. is great because you've got like something to plug mm -hmm. yeah man it's yeah. like a, natu yeah. a natural plug so that's I'm desperate that for a piss but continue <laughs> yeah, speaking go, go for yeah, a piss that's, that's something that I want to oh my god, god. loud yeah. as fuck <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah that is something that I want to do like more of like yeah um, and I think like when I eventually can't do parkour and stuff like that anymore that's something that I wouldn't mind going down into just because it, it it wasn't something that I was massively interested in beforehand, but then mm -hmm. doing the extra one and planning it out and just being like, oh, I'm really excited to see how this actually goes. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it, so it went well. And are you on the mic and shit? Or is like, how does, well, how does it work Pretty, like that? pretty yeah. much. So the first one, I pretty much did all on my own because I wanted to see if I could do it. Mm. Now doing the first one, I'm like, I can't do this on my own. Yeah. I need help. <laughs> so yeah, for the first one, I like, um, I went there two or three days before with mm -hmm. Richie, a guy that trains in Exeter. Um, and we planned out a speed route and we planned out 10 skill challenges. Um, and oh, then, the skill must be so fun. Man, it's the, an outdoor spot as well. Yeah, so the skill one was yeah. so good because there was challenges there that I had done mm -hmm. um, that I just wanted to see people do again. Yeah. And unfortunately, so that we had 10 challenges that got done and then I had five more challenges for the final, which I haven't been done a couple of them haven't been done that I just wanted people to do yeah. like I wanted to see someone like that's, send, that's the like, best opportunity yeah exactly. make a whole event just because you want to see the I challenges just, I done I literally that's just wanted I wanted to see someone do this one concrete and I was like it's make that's wham. that's like the um that 180 at the NAPC gym yeah that they set twice a year a year like they set one year and then they set the next year because no one did it and it's that disgusting angled like pillar thing yeah yeah and they were like yeah it's back in because we want to see it happen. we want to see like, people do it yeah so what's unfortunate that they never got done or yeah so now because um we literally ran out of daylight and it started to rain as well so sure. um we just used the score from the 10 of the 10 challenges that everyone did and then the winners got announced from that 
Um, but I wanted to get down to like five and then do some like gnarly challenges and really scare some people. But mm-hmm. didn't come to that. Well, maybe really the next one. Was there any, yeah, was there any yeah. sense? Yeah. Any like horrible? Um, no, I was. Oh my god, man! I haven't felt nerves like it. Like I, what, I you, didn't. You it was my like it's yeah. my responsibility. Like I did. No, it's, no, it's not actually my responsibility. But like I mm. set like a couple of gnarly little little challenges that can cause maybe a little bit of harm if done wrong <laughs> but um yeah at, luckily there was only like one bail ish joe kind of fell over a bit but he was fine and then yeah it's but i was so sh- no um joe from brighton oh um, joe Bajin. joe Bajin. Bajin. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 um yeah he he fell over but he, he was all right <laughs> <He's> <laughs> I know, always I know, all right I know broken him. bones yeah i know him as well so it's not as bad yeah like, yeah, and yeah. If i know the person rather than the I'll kid on his first day yeah, with his parents watching so we right. had we had one guy turn up with his kids um and he was just a bricklayer and he and he, he was just like can i have a go i was like yep <laughs> <laughs> so he did the speed course and he like vaulted like gate vaulted off something a story high down to the floor amazing and then it was, it wait was, gate vaulted yeah like you know like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and he just like just did the speed course that's and just, like, sick it was so cool to watch that's wow. so, sick and his kids like had a go at it as well and like Climb down and everyone was like trying to support him and stuff and yeah it was it was such a cool atmosphere wow. do you remember at the underground gym when that guy that ran i think it was just you and me were there and that random guy came in for like a session and so, yeah. he tried to do that uh, he was really keen on doing that arm jump like sort of t- kind of down to that like slightly horseshoe ledge thing yeah yeah and we were like really it's not like a sm- it's not big mm. but it's slightly down it's a bit like not your first arm jump yeah yeah and we were like really just like just make sure you get your feet out like do this lean back a bit things and he just double ankle things oh, like seven, and yeah. i just remember he just clearly had probably never felt what like an ankle yeah. thing feels like Pain oh, you <laughs> always think it's a bone oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. ligaments oh, gone snap and i'm pretty yeah, certain yeah. he just didn't really do anything after that yeah, like, yeah. Uh, but that's what i was really worried about yeah. i was like i was worried about this guy just like literally sending it head first off a story drop um, <laughs> but luckily he was he was calm and he got to the end and he was really thankful that he got the opportunity to have a go at it and i think that's that's kind of the main thing about yeah. it like we were lucky we had literally like um a six-year-old i don't know how old he was actually maybe he was a bit older than that eight ten-year-old say and then like a 40 year old yeah all doing the same competition That's all sick. doing they all did the speed comp and then they, they set out the skill comp so i think it's weird because it's like the thing that you did is like anyone can do it anyone can obviously do it, it yeah. helps that you've got like a bit of a name and things yeah and I, I, obviously i was super grateful to flight as well who were able yeah. to put some money towards it so i could just be like oh, okay it's worth you guys coming down. like little things in your hometown it's like you can just kind of try have a go yeah, yeah. and that's and that's all it the was. first it's one with like yeah this first one was just have a go and and that's why i didn't massively advertise it anywhere i put it on my story a couple of times and put it in local group chats and mm. like the extra group chat taunt and, and places mm. like that just like guys i'm doing this if you want to come down because these like new go. events or comps and things don't always have to start with like didn't something this, huge yeah exactly. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, uh, like it needs to be managed it's almost well, something to remind so like myself as well because like i don't know if we were like oh let's host a, an event like a full of movement my head would automatically go cool we need to put on something to the scale of the moment be yeah. because that's what the level is yeah but it's like it doesn't we could just mm. yeah you need to I, start I, yeah. and then build it up i was yeah. super surprised at just like the vibe that came out of it like I, I knew it wasn't gonna be the best event in the world but i was just i felt so like uh like thankful for everyone to come in and like so stoked that everyone kind of had a good time that's like sick. it's not like it didn't have to be people went in 10 grand or whatever like that someone walked away with 50 quid mm-hmm. yeah, but like yeah. everyone was just so supportive and Wow. really like interested in having a go at some disgusting challenges and mm-hmm. that's kind of what i wanted to do really. yeah because i've done like car, key car park is like my back back garden like i've trained there hundreds and thousands of times mm-hmm. um and i hate to love that place but um <laughs> yeah like and now i want to go and do one in bristol um because i've trained at so many spots there a couple of like, yeah a lot and there's some grim challenges that mm-hmm. need to be done Sick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's if, that's they just need to the be done. secret underlying exactly. thing. Yeah. And if I can get people that are so sick in certain areas to come down and have a go, I can be like, this one is for you. Like, yeah. This disgusting yeah, 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 yeah. tack one eighty to dino is is perfect for you. Yeah. Or something like that. Sick. So if that car park's going, is there gonna be some things that you'll never get to do? So do I have Have you accepted it? No, I haven't accepted it because they haven't got the bulldozers in yet and I do have something that like it's just been on my list for ages that i'd like to try mm. have you done yeah. the just like massive kong high drop off the side of the like bridge <sighs> thing to the grass so that's never interested me but <laughs> the, the Kai, one that, yeah yeah Kai Kai did, did, like yeah. V- at the start of him training he just like built up to it and was like oh i'm just gonna do this huge high drop he used to train in exeter and he no joke he jumped down two sets of nine 
steps like it was nine <laughs> nine steps flat and then nine steps and he just ran and jumped from the top <laughs> and then landed at the bottom and rolled and almost landed in like a little river like honestly if you guys ever come to Exton, i'll show you yeah and you and you'll just go no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> it's that high like dom who like it's that big <laughs> oh my it's, god yeah. that is amazing but yeah like there's there's a couple of things that i'd like mm. to get done before that place goes so do you so. have a physical list i don't but i've been you there have, for so yeah so do you have it but like at all with parkour do you ever write things down um yeah if i'm shooting for a video yeah 100 i have a video checklist yeah so like when i was shooting for night uh light work sorry um which was done on the storm channel with kai i went to that abandoned hotel with my friend because i saw someone put it on their snapchat story or something like that uh, i was like okay. where's that went there and i was like oh my god there's like actual possibilities to do stuff here mm -hmm. so then made a list and then yeah went back i can't believe how off. much you squeezed out of a place like that yeah man because yeah. i always think with those places you have to be so lucky that it's a spot yeah but they kind of weren't spots but you no, still did there, and there, there was one thing that i still walked away from there's still like a final challenge there that i haven't done really? it's just like a running running pre into like a v of a tree which is just like <laughs> it's just grim oh, but shit. like is is possible the problem with trees is they grow yeah the challenges and, sometimes get harder or worse and like, i was just scared of the bark breaking that was my yeah. main thing was just like preying it and then just like both legs snapping off because <laughs> of, yeah yeah but yeah, man, that that shoot was that shoot was incredible. Like, mm -hmm. I, well, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I really sick. enjoyed that one. That was a fucking banger. Um, is I don't know why I was like confused. Um, that question. <laughs> well, I just more how to phrase it. Basically, is parkour your full time job? Yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah, because yeah, you were. Yeah. I feel like you were working. Or maybe it was study. I don't know. I just remember yeah. you like out in malls doing. Yeah, yeah. So stuff. I've so I have a foundation degree in outdoor education. Ah, so okay. I was at university studying outdoor education and yeah, pretty much teaching people how to kayak, canoe, climb, so, and all yeah. those sort of things. Don't know if it really counts as a, as a degree, but um, if, it's on the, if it's on the piece of paper, exactly. then it's a degree. And yeah, so. and like I'm, I've been blessed with super, super. Um, what's the word? opportunities oh, like yeah like opportunity no i've been just super supportive parents like they they really wanted me to go and do parkour and stuff like that but they were like pretty keen on me getting some sort of education as well just to fall back on yeah yeah um so during that like most of my formative years of doing parkour i was studying and then working as a gymnastics coach and then i went to university and i was yeah studying university and also coaching gymnastics and then once i got that piece of paper to say that I've passed this degree then yeah. now they're just like yeah go for it um, Sick, which is super yeah and, and I'm, I'm blessed at that because I know a lot of people aren't as fortunate as I've been in that in that department but yeah like being able to kind of go all in at it is it's been really interesting and it's been really eye-opening like mm -hmm. how no there's no money in parkour <laughs> <laughs> <I know. Yeah. laughs> yeah. um, um, yeah. so like oh, I mean Sort of almost like much like Travis, you're doing a bit of a YouTube grind at the moment. Trying to. Is yeah. that something you want to sort of double down on, or you just? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think like the amount that I train and the stuff that I'm doing is like kind of interesting enough to then try and make some videos and stuff. Yeah, out yeah, of. yeah. definitely is. I'd really, I'd really like to sort of get a videographer and then sort of try and do some sort of crossover of like, okay, I'm doing parkour, but then tomorrow I'm going to go and do this weightlifting session and kind of give a little bit more insight into how I train and why I train as opposed to not just like the everyday session. Do you think this mm. is a bit of a curse of like social media and seeing kind of successful wealthy people who have this capacity? Cause I, it's, it's, it's one of these things I always like have this question in my head of like, is this really egotistical? But part of me would love to just like, cause I like making videos, but I mm. don't particularly like filming all the time and I don't particularly like editing. So I'm like, mm. I'd love someone to follow me around, but not yeah. in like a look at this guy, he's so great, but yeah. like, uh, well, they'd capture the realness of what you're doing. Yeah, maybe. it's like, we always talk about it just like we would, I mean, the dream, if we ever had sort of actual money, we'd try and have someone who's just like purely just content. Just like they're just, film. yeah, yeah exactly. they're just filming, they're capturing and like creating and, and helping. The thing, um, I think you, you're, you relate to this as well. The thing we find the hardest is we have so many other things to do mm. that just filming is just like, it's so difficult. So like mm. when I'm out training parkour, I just want to train parkour. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to worry about carrying a camera around and then filming and, and stuff like that. And it's explaining just break, the challenge. Do you know what I mean? It breaks up the, it breaks up the session and you cool down slightly and then you go back in and you're like, oh, I'm a bit. Even filming just like without a whole video for an Instagram clip or whatever. Yeah. Finding I see, someone I'm, to film yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. It's yeah. like that 
in it alone takes up some time and obviously yeah. everyone's kind of naturally okay with that anyway yeah exactly you, like if you do it for someone because you've spotted you. a challenge you might have started prepping for it and then by the time you've given someone the phone it's yeah like, yeah yeah mm. so I do, like i think that would be cool but I, I do think the like there's there's opportunities that sort of maybe people don't well there's there's like leaps of faith that maybe basically i could imagine if i was sort of 16 and I heard you be like oh I'd like a videographer yeah. and I lived near you and I frequently was around you and I yeah. was in that like transitional period of like having a fair amount of free time maybe this is just because I kind of know it's almost kind of what I did with like after I finished school and then it, that I mean for me I did that I filmed all the time I filmed with Tim all the time I like committed to yeah. that lifestyle and then that led to flow and never and now I'm here yeah but it's like I do feel like there's more opportunities for people like that to be like oh shit ed wants a cameraman like i'm not gonna like you you can't pay the cameraman but no. like i'm just gonna work with ed like build this relationship and then oh suddenly ed's channel's got five times as many subscribers because we've upped the content mm. there's actually a bit of money coming in and just split it. Yeah. yeah ed's throwing me some money oh there's a job that's happened like oh ed's going to the gymshark hq oh sick i get to go and it's mm. like this, there's, there are I, opportunities. I like think that. there's more opportunities for sort of video creators to support up and coming athletes than people think. And mm -hmm. it's a huge risk and it won't always pay off. Yeah. But it's like, it's, we always talk about that sort of provide value, but it's like, yeah. it, I think video is, you have a, a, a wider skill set than just photo, but if you can do both, like basically supporting up and coming athletes is, you can become their like backbone. Is There's a lot mm. there. Mm. I um, just, yeah. Like imagine, imagine it's the same for Travis and stuff mm. like that. Like mm -hmm. if he had someone just following around the camera, he wouldn't have to worry about setting up a tripod and then talking to the camera. It could just be way more natural. Yeah, and, yeah. It just, and then in turn, it'd be more entertaining. And then hopefully you'd, you'd like to think mm. that more people would then watch. Yeah. But again, it is, it is just a, a leap of faith. And at the moment, I'm just trying to do it on my own as much as I can to yeah. then provide like, okay, it, ha it is working. It has worked. Yeah. Here's, here's something that I can kind of put into it. I would like to see more of like the ins and out of your life, but still a lot of parkour content. Yeah, yeah. Because and what's your, I find because you're always to... building, like you said, you went to the gym in the first place to benefit parkour and things like that. I think so many people could benefit off of watching you, your yeah. life. What's an average day for you? Like wake up, what time? Do first. And so do it, yeah, it, 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 does, it does depend on kind of how i'm feeling yeah um, and also who's out but i do if so if it's a non-parkour day then i'll try and wake up and go for a run come back what time up. what time oh i wake up at like nine ish oh so i'm pretty lazy yeah fucking hell. yeah <laughs> yeah you wake can up allow at, that wake up at yeah nine true yeah, yeah. <laughs> his and body then, literally needs that <laughs> stuff, <isn't it? laughs> then yeah try and go for a run or something like that um get back have some breakfast and then kind of see where the day's taken if it's like a at the moment it's just been wet all the time so then i'll just message my friend and i'll go to the gym and then i'll because i like i don't have too much on that day then i'll just spend like a while at the gym doing kind of whatever i want and then like if i'm if when tim's back he's not back at the moment so i'll go down to tim's and just spend a day down at tim's yeah i could get up do you like lives. not having because I, I mean it sounds like you've got a bit of a routine but it sounds pretty loose in yeah. terms of like take you take it as do you like that or do you yeah. yeah so i yeah i do it just means that i can be super adaptable so like say someone's like oh um i'm training in bristol stage on the car i'm just like yes of course i'll be there yeah um or yeah and if if one of my crossfit friends is just like oh we're doing like a savage like the other day i got invited to go and work out with some people that are going to the crossfit games which uh, are like okay massive the the biggest event in crossfit yeah and i went and trained with them and i felt like i've been hit by a bus like it was yeah. awful but like it was such a cool experience like well i don't get that opportunity to train with those people yeah regularly what are your thoughts on crossfit pull-ups the old like it's just they're just a different thing i find like, it i can't one i what can't is do crossfit, them crossfit just like um, hang on the bar and just flap it's like uh yeah <laughs> oh, that, got, like, that, but, that's butterfly that butterfly butterfly good you, yeah, you pull your chest up to the bottom. It's because yeah, you yeah. get like sets where it's like, cool, do a lot. And obviously most people can't do that many pull-ups. So you're yeah. using a lot more momentum. To it's, yeah, more of a momentum swing. But it, it's it's not a pull-up. Yeah, it's completely so different. It's just a, yeah, it's just a different skill. I like it just when you see people who are just absolutely fucking, they're just shot and they're trying yeah, to just like, trying to go and for then it. literally just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like hanging on the bar. Yeah, that's, mm. that's not, <laughs> not ideal. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah. Well, so different thing. Speaking of kind of, I guess like, routine youtube etc as we asked travis like where where's it going for you travis obviously said he doesn't plan too far ahead but yeah. like I where, where do you want to be in 10 years time how well, old are you now 24 24 okay quite old 
Yeah. <laughs> Quite old. Yeah, man. yeah, really old. Old in the game. Um, I want to have my own gym. Sick. Yeah. So um, I would like to work with someone or work with a company. Um, I'm talking to Flight at the moment. Um, there's like, and maybe trying to open somewhere up in Bristol. Like I'd, it would. That's kind of my goal at the moment is to try and have a gym, have a I was place. Literally about to correct you on the up in Bristol thing then, and like just suddenly <laughs> had this flashback. Yeah, yeah sorry. No, it's, uh, it's <laughs> actually, it's actually <laughs> yeah, sick. I'd li- yeah, I'd, I'd like to have a gym. I'd like to have a place where people can come and train and learn learn to do parkour. Yeah. Um, the ultimate goal for me would be to be able to open a gym and have amazing coaches and stuff like that, and be able to kind of separate from it, so I can still go and train. I can yeah, still yeah. go and do all mm. these things. And then when I'm not able to do that, then go and do more coaching and stuff like that. But yeah, the ultimate goal would be to be able to like promote it, get as many people there as I can, and then kind of help when I'm needed and not be there when I'm not. Can you call it like Ed's, like Ed's, you know, you get like Ed's Diner or something. Like, <laughs> Ed's got like, do you know what I mean? It's like, that's amazing. rather than calling it kind of something that's like cool sounding, it sounds yeah, more just- friendly. Ed's place. Yeah, Ed's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go over to Ed's place? Yeah, it's got a train. Amazing. Got a train set in the back room, so yeah. when he's not training, <laughs> whittling spoons. In the yeah. Back. Um, but yeah, and and then that when that and the street sessions thing, I really want to yeah, push that that's and kind of take that on. But uh, yeah, as as far as it goes, I, I would actually really like to do some more stunt stuff because mm. I haven't done a lot of stunt stuff. Yeah. Um, like I've been on one or two shoots and stuff. Um, but I'd like to experience that world. I know a lot of people are kind of against park. Well, not against it, but a lot of people are like, well, stunts is and parkour, and I definitely agree with you, but I'd like to have a go at it. I think uh, it, it isn't, but it parkour yeah, athletes are very good at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and also it pays very it well. It does pay well as well. So, so it does seem to be that some people go, yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit of stunts, and then and they go, that's it. Oh, I've just bought a house. I'm yeah. going to do some more yeah, stunts. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> Um, I would like to kind of get a little insight into that world really, which would be, yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. But as far as parkour goes, I just want to be able to go on as many jobs, not jobs, many shoots as I can. So video projects and all that sort of thing. I, I would really want to be a part of and yeah, training as much as I can on so, YouTube and then, yeah, obviously doing Instagram and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. And I, I guess also good. what we have is, a. Uh, I mean, we've got, if you weren't doing parkour, what would you be doing? But it'd yeah. probably be, be just active, lifting right? weights, wouldn't it? Like, something active. My dad was in the forces. So I oh, think okay. maybe I would go that route um, of, yeah, maybe the military. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I've got like a foundation degree in outdoor education and I really enjoyed kayaking. I really enjoyed mountain biking and that sort of thing as well. So maybe leading groups on expeditions and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Sick. And that's something that like, I'd like to get back into kind of. Yeah, yeah, once yeah. I've kind of, I don't know used up all my stuff from parkour your juices yeah, yeah. Um, maybe go and do some because I'd really like to do some cool crossover things with parkour and like running or go on some like mad hikes and stuff like that mm. and I think a lot of parkour people are the same like they kind of want to push themselves um, so I think that kind of space hasn't been explored yet um, yeah. maybe maybe something that I'd like like to look into sick I feel like I've seen videos of you on mountain bikes before yeah yeah, yeah. just like just yeah just enjoy enjoy i enjoy yeah. being outside i think that's the main thing yeah like, just that the, cro- the crossover to the mountain biking just has a similar feel i know it's on mm. wheels but like it is pretty sick i, I don't really yeah. do it but like it's so basically nightmare scenario for you is cubicle office job oh god sitting in that room <laughs> sitting in god. that room like max editing yeah trust me once that's over yeah. I'm not doing another I'm, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am super jealous of you guys of, that have that skill though, of, that skill set of putting like, because we watched a little bit of it then and like being able to tell a story and put a piece together and sync up all the audio and put like interesting edits to make it like a comprehensive piece. That uh, that's something I'm definitely jealous of. And um, because like at the moment I'm like editing vlogs on da vinci and it's just like bare bones and stuff like do that. do you enjoy it like the editing or? so i enjoy putting it together yeah um but i don't have enough interest in it to then do the like additional work to then make yeah. it like the next sort of like the next step yeah, say. yeah, yeah. um because in that time i would prefer to go out running yeah. or lifting weights yeah. or something like that there's definitely um, a balance because we've realized that yeah recently because you'll spend so long in there and be like everything feels wrong yeah i haven't trained in so long what's going on yeah so yeah it's yeah office job i'd hate as well to be honest yeah yeah man Mm. i think the only way that i could do something like that is if it was just purely for saving up money to then go on a trip Mm -hmm. like if i'm if i i don't know worked 
in an office or something and yeah i had to work there for six months to then go on a once a lifetime trip then yeah you can see the end of it mm -hmm. but being stuck there for yeah an unlimited amount of time would would do me then yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do me then. but well, i'd like to do seasons and stuff like that as well but that doesn't really go hand in hand with in what sense like go and do a winter season or go and do a summer season somewhere oh uh, okay so yeah, like yeah. a ski season and don't know be a bar rep or something like that yeah and just go snowboarding every day i was so close to doing that when i was younger like yeah i know so many people that have done it and yeah. i'm just like oh that was amazing i also but, know people who did it once as like a gap year thing and yeah. then basically did it throughout most of their 20s so this is the other thing people get trapped in that because they worked like they'd work a shitty job in the summer for their season no. work the season kind of just not really they don't really earn anything apart from what pays them mm. and then they get through like the a chunk of their 20s and they're like i don't oh. know what i'm doing yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah where's my job like what yeah. where's my life yeah so, so i would love to do it but that doesn't that really doesn't go hand in hand with being yeah, a parkour tough. athlete like if you're gonna go and spend six months in the french alps you can have the best time but you're probably gonna lose how to run on a rail like yeah yeah the the crossover there isn't isn't as good but i don't know still still looks fun yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all up for fun things mm -hmm. sick anything else you want to talk about you got any questions bloggy producer bloggy have you fallen asleep no no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry very very nice the amount of times right i've looked up and bloggy has been asleep like he's been like working on his laptop and he's just fallen asleep sitting up so <laughs> we need to be aware of that actually yeah, it's not happening at the moment though, and it's been all good. good. It's, of, it's just kind of strange because obviously Ed and I like we come from same the, same, area. the same ends, and we've trained together for quite a lot of that. Um, and yeah, it, I think it's so cool that I, I remember this time in the southwest, and like everyone was looking up to all these people, and because we were kind of an isolated community, I feel like the only people we looked at were the people at the top, mm. and that almost created this like drive for a lot of people to try and do something about it yeah and like most of the people from our kind of generation have either left or done something within the community yeah which is really kind of awesome to see you it's know. yeah it's super mad that like i started training with tim and now we're both in the same sort of situation like i competed against tim in gymnastics competitions and yeah that's mad. i did gymnastics with tim and then now we just kind of went into parkour and we've both gone our separate ways in parkour does that mean tim mm -hmm. was in the same group of not being quite good enough to no so tim was from plymouth and i was from exeter ah okay um so he went to university in exeter and then during that time i was in that separate group and he was doing university he was um becoming a aircraft engineer yeah 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 and um he was doing gymnastics at the same time like trying to do both um and then yeah i tried to convince him to come out and do parkour and Sick. it worked <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now yeah he was, owes it all to you yeah exactly and you can give me 50 percent as well very true <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah no oh. it's mad it's crazy to think back on stuff like that Just, mm -hmm. yeah, i both like ended up on storm and yeah all kind of links together it's all those little things it really is just yeah, a micro, yeah, yeah. Micro the Decisions. moments in between yeah yeah and then it just yeah you get i remember looking up to people like pip anderson and just being like oh my god you opened a parkour park in taunton you are a god <laughs> 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 you're an absolute yeah legend. it's mad yeah i went to the opening of it and he was there and i was like oh Whoa, god, god. <laughs> so powerful he gave, he gave me like a free move t-shirt you know, i'd still have it at home I was amazing like, oh wow god. Yeah. so who do you look up to now now you're at the because it's a similar thing yeah with travis's one yeah. is that like when you get to that point where you you've are you've climbed the mountain you've climbed There's the mountain it's like where do you look up now so you i i look up to people that are amazing in their skill sets and just aspire to be as good as they are so if i look at look at like a dom and just like the send on that man is inc incredible yeah. like i would love to have that one day and i look across at marcio and just be like how Sticks. can he drop that far and stick that well like i'd yeah. love to be able to do that one day and then tim at lachets and mm -hmm. daryl as well at lachets just like oh, i'd love to be able to be as good as that and I, I think that's like leaning on their skill sets when i'm training with them and like trying to pick up as much i feel like inspiration is everywhere as long as you're interested yeah, yeah. like yeah yeah because it's, it's quite easy to Especially write something off parkour, though yeah because of the skill set and like d didn't someone do an online competition just for bar flow recently yeah recently yeah and yeah. stuff like that where there's there's people who just like to concentrate on that yeah. yeah so there's inspiration you can find anywhere so and i think it's it's also uh, the way i've gone about it is i just get inspiration off other people and off their movement and stuff like that so i'm not always like trying to do my biggest and best thing like lean into what other people's inspirations are and kind yeah. of like piggyback off the back of that mm -hmm. so you don't have to be massively interested in skiing or whatever to then learn off axis twists but if i'm training with someone that's sick of off axis twists i'll 
be interested in learning it. Yeah. Not because yeah, yeah. not because I like skiing, it's because I like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and then I think that just helps become more of a well-rounded athlete. Like, I, again, I don't want to ever turn up to a spot and go, I can't do anything here. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be able to go everywhere and be able to do kind of everything. Mm. Multifaceted, yeah. Yeah, like, I think it's like how you get the most out of the sport, yeah, in yeah. my opinion. For like, sure. I really enjoy watching people be amazing at certain things, but then when I'm, when I'm training with everyone, I want to be able to do what everyone's doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Can wrap it up? That. Yeah. yeah, anything else you want to... No. What was the street sessions? Street sessions. Was the, yeah. yeah. Make, sure, be, make sure people that. remember that because that I think that could be. Really you, is that like a separate Insta or anything? Or is it just not yet. Yeah. No, it's it's. I'm just literally going to be plugging it on my Instagram. I'll probably put a post up and stuff like that. But Sick. yeah, keep keep your eyes out for that because that is something that I am yeah becoming more and more interested in. Yeah. And excited to do the next one of. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants to help out with those things, then let me know because yeah last time I was trying to do it on my own I was like um sorry can you just stand there and tell me if there's anyone coming up <laughs> just like random people yeah just you like, kind of need some volunteers yeah, don't you? Man. yeah like yeah, I yeah. didn't I didn't realize that I would but yeah literally even doing it at Key Car Park when there's like no one there I was just like oh can you just stand there and make sure they jump over this wall correctly? yeah um but yeah like I'm gonna do the next one in Bristol so yeah if anyone wants to help and doesn't That's really sick. the the thing is with it though is I want people to do it. I don't want people to help. Mm. I want people to go like, ah, oh, I'm gonna have a go at the skill, the speed comp or the skill comp. I'm like, yes, go. Well, I guess go you just gotta go. to make people take turns. Yeah, yeah. Like, as exactly. long as you've got a good routine of like, okay, if you're not doing it, you need to be like, we have people here, here, and here, or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, so it'll probably get to the stage where you do need a couple of people who are like, just know, just there for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keeping score and stuff like that. Yeah, like, exactly. But. Hopefully soon. Hopefully. Amazing. <laughs> Sick. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because I actually just had completely forgotten about that. And that's Sick. really, really cool. So mm-hmm. yeah. awesome. Well I love it. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. Right. Thank you for Thank watching, you for listening. Um, rate, subscribe, comment, love, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If um, you've made it this far, uh, we mentioned it a couple of podcasts ago, but Camilla is I'm sure still trying to raise money to pay for her surgery for her ankle. So I'll try and put that in the description. If not, find that on her profile. But yeah we're definitely trying to help her out um and yeah ed pops up in a little project well the little project the the big film that you're editing at the moment so mm-hmm. that will be coming out at some stage we don't have any confirmed yeah time for his yeah and would have this would this have been a week after capstone released depends I, when we're Travis is going to come out like the day we're filming this ideally we'll then mm. do a solo one together and then we'll release this one because oh, we're, okay, trying, so we're, trying, to do, we're trying to do athlete non-athlete yeah athlete. when this has been recorded capstone just came out so yeah check out Ed's go watch it yeah Sick. featuring that very nice little feature mm-hmm. um yeah i don't think there's anything else to say apart no. from thank you very much yeah, and thank you very love much. you lots and thanks for having me on yeah Peace. music ladies bye wait for the beats, beats. <laughs> there yeah. so strange that Casio watch. <laughs> and again. Bye.